back to Dr. Christopher Busby, who's a chemical physicist and a uh, leading expert on the effects of radiation on humans, studying Chernobyl and other events. Uh, he was the one that first said this is much bigger than Chernobyl, and now they admit it's many, many, many Chernobyls, but the response is different. But during the break, we were discussing why the ruling class is so insane, and then Dr. Busby you know, was getting into uh, that he doesn't believe in aliens, but one would just say it's almost like aliens wanted to destroy the Earth or change the habitat, but he, then he expanded and said, but it's more of just an out-of-control system. And I said, yeah, like Richard Nixon talked about the fact that it was like a wild beast, a machine, an animal, the whole system, and the sum of our actions that we don't even see as bad adds to this giant machine. I mean, take GMO. Every major study, organ failure in the mice, the rats, infertility, but their science shows it does have this effect that bugs won't eat it, and... Uh, so, so what if it does this? Because the mathematics say we've changed this trait. So what if it changes all these other traits? And as I said going to break, the craziness is intensifying. Where I've had doctor, physicist, uh, chemist in his own right, uh, Dr. Doug Rocky on. And th their manuals on DU, they had in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. And he wrote the manual on it in the early 90s. Uh, and he's on tomorrow. Said DU... You can't use it because it ignites in the in the uh, barrel of the cannon or the gun, and you breathe it, and it will reduce your life massively. It will kill you, and we can't use it. Well, they had all this stuff stored, and they said in 1990, we're going to go ahead and use it. And But then they still did some decontamination. Now they have them at shooting ranges for the military, proving grounds, bases everywhere. They take it off base. They use it. They don't even read manuals now. So there is a collective insanity taking place. And I know you're an expert on DU as well, Dr. Busby. But in the time we've got, tell us about your new book, uh, what you were trying to finish up on uh, Fukushima with this collective craziness. And then these other disasters now popping up that don't even hardly make the news. Uh, what's happening? Okay, well, there's three things you're asking me about here. But the first thing is, is my, my new book is called Fukushima and Health, What to Expect. And you can order it from any bookseller or from Green Audit. And what it does is it takes the, the whole of the Chernobyl accident and all of the research that was carried out by my colleagues on the European Committee of Radiation Risk, um, presented at, at the, the third international conference in Lesbos a few years ago. And it turns that into a predictive machine, a predictive engine. To, to say what's going to happen uh, in the people of North Japan and, and the stuff that we're already seeing happening. So that, I think that's quite an important thing because that, that tells us all what is going to happen. And it's not just cancer. What we, have, what we have with radiation and what we've learned in the last 20 years is that these radionuclides actually just reduce lifespan. So you will find that there will be a reduction in lifespan in northern Japan in the same way as a reduction in lifespan in Belarus and Ukraine and those parts that were contaminated. And in fact, indeed, in other parts of the world, whole ranges of diseases that are not conventionally associated with radiation will increase in their rates. So that's the point. So Fukushima and health, what to expect? Now, your second, your second question was about the, 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 what's happening now at, uh, at Fukushima. And the answer is we really don't know. But, uh, I mean, in a sense, when they say they've stabilized it, I think probably it's kind of stabilized itself. I don't think the human beings have had much to do with it, really. Out of, the, uh, out of the reactors into the ground and it's sort of generally cooled down to the extent that it's not getting vastly worse but it is producing lots of radionuclides and they are still coming out of it and so that area will be, will be poisoned for, 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 for hundreds of years in my opinion. People should not move back there because it's a very dangerous place to be and, and, it, and the contamination all along the coast and in the food is absolutely colossal so my, 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 uh, my advice to the people living there is if they can't get out then what they should do is they should they should try and limit the amount of food and milk and water that they, uh, that they, they, they ingest from that area. And also I suggested that they take calcium tablets because calcium does actually block the access of strontium-90 and uranium to the DNA. So that does work. Plenty of studies were done in the 1960s that show that that's, that's the case. And you can buy calcium tablets in any health food shop. So one calcium tablet a day will help. Now your third question was about the general mess of it all. Now, uh, the simplest answer to that, I mean, if we 
were just as Ande tribesmen and we didn't know any science and we were just looking at the world and trying to figure out what was going on, it would be quite easy to to conclude that the world had been taken over by aliens who were trying to, uh, and these aliens' intention was to change the atmosphere and to kill human beings. And of course, I, I mean, that's nonsense, really, because, because that isn't the case. But in a poetical sense, it maybe is the case, because as I see it, the world has become too complicated and too dependent upon mathematical analysis. And, and the trouble with mathematical physics and mathematical analysis of economics is that it is basically a reductionist system. It's, it's something that reduces complicated phenomena to very simple phenomena using numbers. And the problem is it's wrong, because what it does is it, is, is it, 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 it tries to uh, focus on little bits of the world and then study those to death and produce an answer and then try and reassemble it. And, and it's been shown uh, to certainly... Uh, my mind over the last hundred years that this has resulted in a monster. It's resulted in the construction of an enormous machine, a kind of economic system that is destroying the people that it's supposed to help. It's, 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 it's a sort of out of control system. And so the question is what to do about it. Well, in my opinion, it is possible to do something about it. We have to split our monster up into little pieces and deal with it separately. And one way to do this is to, is to reduce it down to nation states again. And I'm not a nationalist. Actually, I think that we have to reduce the size of the units in order to, to, to make the thing more human scale. These enormous units like the United States of America and, and Europe and China, they're just too, too large and too complicated to deal with. So we have to have smaller units. Well, freedom normally only works in very small decentralized systems. I think so. I think we need, to, we need to go back to sort of small nation states. And I think the United States as a unit is too big. So I, there is a website which, which well, I, I live in Latvia a lot of the time, which is a very small ex-Soviet country in the Baltic. And it's got quite a large land area and quite a small population. And we're trying to set up some kind of nation, national system there that might be, might be uh, possible to, to, to form a model for the kind of thing that I'm talking about. And there's a website called nationalstate.info, which if anybody's interested, they can go and look at and see the sorts of ideas that we have that will try and bring the whole of this monster down to a kind of human scale so it can be dealt with. At the moment, it's just out of control. It's like Godzilla. It's walking across the planet, crushing whole populations, crushing whole empires, crushing towns and cities, and, and now we see crushing northern Japan, too. I think that really is my, my answer. That's my kind of message to the planet, really. The, the thing is out of control, it's a monster, and we have to sort of separate it up into little items so that we can produce some sort of human-scale uh, response to, the, to this. Otherwise, we are all doomed, in my opinion. Well, I agree with you. I, I mean, just take the DU issue, where their own manuals that we've shown here on air say, do not use it, it's deadly, and then they make a political decision to say, no, it's fine, and commit the military men and women to slow, grueling, horrible, degenerative deaths. Yeah, and their children, too. I mean, the study that I've just done has looked at the, the, the offspring of the uh, American soldiers in, um, in the Gulf War, and there are high levels of congenital malformation in them, as well as the high general, uh, congenital malformation rates in the Iraqi populations, in Fallujah, for example. Yes. So you're killing your own troops. Yeah, wasn't Fallujah, even uh, major papers reported, it was 16 times higher than normal birth defects? That's right, yeah, sure, and, and, and up to 38 times the cancer, too, so some very serious things happening there. But you see, again, we come back to this point about the size of the operation. You see, the, 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 the United States... Um, the government, if you like, the Pentagon, they want to win the war. They want to prevent Saddam Hussein from putting all his oil money into euros. So they have to, that's their operation, you see. That's the monster operation. And, of course, in order to do that, they have to win the war. And Saddam had a lot of big tanks, you know, ex-Soviet tanks with armor. So they had to take out his tanks. So they used depleted the uranium. And then, of course, as a result of that, everybody suffers. But, but you know, the, the, it's a question of what you're of what your intention is, and, and, and I think you have, we have to reduce the size of the people who are operating, the, the, the size of the, of the units, and that sort of thing wouldn't happen. Well, I agree with you, but there was a conscious decision to proliferate this, and because they just don't care about the troops, and they don't care about themselves. It, it, it is a almost like a mad scramble 
for all these government contracts and it creates a market for this auction and then in the feeding frenzy kind of like sharks in feeding frenzies will yes. will bite and kill each other I'll tell, I'll tell you a very interesting thing is that, that after they discovered a childhood leukemia cluster at Sellafield which is a big nuclear site in the United Kingdom there was a Mori poll where they went and asked all of the workers there and they said do you think you're likely to have a child with childhood leukemia uh, as a result of, of what's, what's emerged and, and, uh, and, and secondly they said and would you leave your job as a result of, of if you believe this and, and, they, and they all said well a lot of them said we do believe that the radiation causes childhood leukemia, but we will not leave our job because the probability of, of, of uh, having no money when we leave our job is, is much greater than the probability of having a child with childhood leukemia. So everybody's keeping their fingers crossed and hoping that it won't be them. And then more and more people don't care. I mean, I guess it's the analogy of peeing in the swimming pool. And if, and if you go to a city pool and there's 500 kids a day in it, it is literally a, a stinking urine bath. And there's so much chlorine in it, you can't even swim. And now the phenomenon of people too lazy and peeing in pools, pools everywhere are ruined. And it's, it, it's kind of the same thing. I suppose you could call that the tragedy of the commons. Yes, yes. I, I, I tell you, it is crazy because, I mean, some job, if my child had a 1% chance of getting cancer higher, I wouldn't take it. Uh, but, yes, but, but, but people aren't all the same, are they? I mean, if you, if you take this idea of childhood leukemia and you compare it with being bitten by a snake in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a park, you know, and you said to a mother, look, the probability of your child being bitten by a snake and dying in this park is one in a million, would you put the child in there? She would say no, wouldn't she? So, so there is quite a difference between men and women in, in, in the analysis here. And this brings me back to my point about rational thought and logic and physicists and all the rest of it. Because if you look at the anti-nuclear movement, you find that there are many more women in the anti-nuclear movement than there are men. So it is, it is about ways of thinking, I have to say. Well, look, here's my issue. I've studied, as a layperson, talked to a lot of experts, in nuclear power. And certainly there's some newer technologies. I want to get your view on this in closing. And it could be done better. But the system has shown, and these corporations have shown, I mean, you take the Simi Valley salt reactors, you know, bigger than Chernobyl, blows up for 50 years, they keep it secret. So they've shown that they don't care and they don't even want to try to do it safely. And they're crazy. And so, I mean, it's kind of like a death penalty. I am for the death penalty if it was in a village 3,000 years ago and 20 people in the village saw somebody kill a child. Well, the village takes them, hauls them up, and hangs them. I get that. I'm for it. But when you have a government so corrupt, it's been caught framing people, and a third of those on death row, it turns out, are innocent. I have to be against the death penalty because you can't trust the implementation of it by a criminal government. Same thing. Well, there it comes back to what I was saying. It's a question of scale, isn't it? It's a question of the size of the monster that we create. And it's about time, if we're going to do anything to try and save us all, we're going to have to reduce the size of the units where the decisions are made. That's my belief. I think that's our only hope. Well, yeah, we've got not generals even in the in the, in the, in the back now. We've got generals that are sitting in their basement, you know, playing tiddlywinks while the whole world around them is is going into. I mean, in closing, look at these articles: arrest, pepper spray, gunshots, brawls, and doors pulled off hinges, chaos as stores across the U.S. and thousands of shoppers scramble for new Nike Air Jordans because the system says this is success, so people will kill for it. Meanwhile, you see a similar type of insanity, millions of North Koreans worshipping Kim Jong-il, but at least there they know it's because they'll be put in a slave labor camp if they don't. This Western model of mind control is so much better because they're not fake fighting and screaming and crying. They really think their life depends on some ugly tennis shoes. Well, I think they're going to be dis dispossessed of that idea in the next year or two.